Welcome to the Battle of the Books competition for the 2022-2023 school year. I'm Gail Becker with USD 259, your host for this program. Joining me are student teams from Beach, Dodge, Griffith, and Irving Elementary Schools. These teams have already competed in preliminary rounds at their schools in order to appear on today's program. We're looking forward to some exciting games. Students were given a list of 64 books to read. They need to be familiar with events, characters, and authors of the books to answer the questions. They will also give a book talk about one title from the list. Each team has drawn a book title and was given 15 minutes to prepare a three-minute presentation about the book. These book talks were taped earlier and will be seen later in the program. 12 points are possible for the book talk. The points will be added to the scores in all of the rounds. The first two teams to compete are Beach and Dodge Elementary Schools. Students, would you introduce yourselves and tell us the title of your favorite book? And we're going to start over here with Dodge. Hi, my name is Kinley and my favorite book is Midnight at the Barclay Hotel. Hi, my name is Sotita and my favorite book is Allergenic. Hi, my name is Troy and my favorite book is Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. <laughs> Hi, my name is Xavier, and my favorite book is Bad Guys. Thank you, Dodge. And now we're going to go over to Beach. Hi, my name is Valerie, and my favorite book is Because of the Rabbit. Hi, my name is Anna, and my favorite book is Save Me a Seat. Hi, my name is Sadai, and my favorite book is Allergic. My name is Brox, and my favorite book is A Wolf Called Wander. Thank you. And before we get started, we'll review the rules so the audience will know how the game is played. Each round will consist of 20 questions given to alternating teams. Team members have 30 seconds to answer. They may confer about the answer, but only the person with the book may say the answer. Five points will be awarded for a correct title and five points added if the team can also name the author. If the team cannot answer the question or the answer is incorrect, the other team is allowed five seconds to give an answer. Five points will be awarded for the correct title. The winning team in the first round will compete with the winning team of the second round for our final match. First, let's take a look at the book talks from our first two competing teams. Mickey's Books Game Show. Today we'll be asking Valerie and Braxton a series of questions from Ramona Quimby, age 8. Let's, Let's play. play. Braxton, who is the author? The author is Cleary. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Valerie, what is the, uh, the characters? The characters are Ramona, Mrs. Quimby, Mr. Quimby, Ramona's teacher, and Beezus. Ding, 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 ding. Braxton, what is the setting? The setting is Ramona's house and Ramona's school. Ding, ding, ding. Braxton, what is the problem? The problem is that Joppa, Missouri gets hit by a tornado. And uh, Valerie, what is the problem? The problem is that one day, Ramona gets hurt and goes to the nurse's office and hears her teacher calling her a nuisance. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Braxton, what is the resolution? The resolution is that Joppa, Missouri gets fixed by the tornado. Uh, uh, Valerie, what is the resolution? The resolution is that Ramona's teacher tells her that she is not a nuisance, and she said that it is a nuisance that she had to go to the nurse's office. Ding, ding, ding. ding. That is it for Mickey's Books Game Show. Valerie has won. Cut. Cut. <sighs> Where's your book? I don't know. You, know. you don't have to yell. Please don't yell. Can I help you find something? Yeah, I'm looking for a book, duh. Scritch Scratch? No. Harry Potter? No. no. Dark Day in the Deep Sea? Yes. yes. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Oh. Come on. Just say names. It's 
by Mary Pope Osborne. The main characters are Annie and Jack. And the problem is the, the treehouse teleports them to the deep sea and the way they get back is they help the people who live there. Whatever, just show me where the book is. Thanks. Whatever. Beach earned 10 points on their book talk and Dodge earned seven points. They will start the round with those scores. The team from Beach will answer the first question. All right, here we go. In which book does children's author Ignatius B. Grumpley rent a house for the summer in Ghastly, Illinois to write his next installment of Ghost Tamers? Dying to meet you. Yes, and can, do you know the author? Khalees. Can you say it again? Khalees or, what is it? Yes, Khalees. Judges. Okay, yep, we'll accept that. All right, very good, off to a good start. Okay, this question is for Dodge. In which book does a wild horse finally get to race in the Kentucky Derby? The Black Scallion. And the author? We don't know. Okay, well you get five uh, points for the title. And the author was Farley. Okay, back to Beach. In which book do we learn that there is a special military unit whose job is to keep watch over the graves at Arlington National Cemetery? Twenty One Steps by Gottsfield. That's correct. Good job. All right, Dodge. In which book did this royal leader rule for only nine years? Who was King Tut? Who was King Tut? Uh huh. And the author? Roberta Edwards. Roberta Edwards. Thank you. That is correct. All right, back to Beach. When the robot Linex needed a transmitter. The main character in this book borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie to fix the problem. Name the book. Uh, Whoosh by Barton. That's correct. All right, Dodge. In which book does the reader learn to empathize with both wild predators and their prey? A Wolf Called Wonder? That's correct. Yes. Do you know an author? Hmm. Wait, do you guys all remember what they said? They did Wolf Called Wonder? Like Adrian? That's not correct, but you get five points for your title. All right. Beach. Name the book where two people were destined to become best friends from the moment they were in their cribs at a facility in Willow Falls. Eleven Birthdays by Mass. That's correct. All right, Dodge. Okay. In which book do we read of a milkmaid who, while daydreaming, threw her head back and lost the milk that she had planned to use for making butter? Okay, let's go to beach. Five seconds. Ramona Quimby. No, the correct answer was Aesop's Fables by Pinkney. All right. Um, thank you. It's Beach's turn for this question. 
Um, Emma uses the French word pépère for her grandpa because he was French Canadian. Name the book. Because of the rabbit? That's correct. And By Lord? Yes. Very good. All right, Dodge. In which book do you learn that our planet contains over 5,000 minerals? Bling. Okay, and do you have an author? Emma Barton Rennie. Say the last name again. Rennie? Yes, that's correct. All right, Beach. In which book do you read about the Coast Guard's first unit that figured out secret messages? Codebreaker's Spy Hunter by Walmart. That's correct. Dodge, in which book did the main characters wear life preservers made of cork? Is it the Science on the Oregon Trail? No, I'm sorry, that's not right. Um, Beach, do you have five seconds? Trash Revolution by Phoebe? Nope, that's not correct. It was Dark Day in the Deep Sea by Osborne. All right, okay, back to Beach. In which book does the main character who loves sugar say, I never forget a good dessert? Um, Ramona Quimby, age eight? No, that's not correct. Dodge, do you have an answer? Oh, the correct answer was The Great Shelby Holmes by Yulberg. All right, back to Dodge. In this book, the main character saves the day by building a bridge out of fruit roll ups, tree roots, and other random objects. Name the book. Smell a Kelly. No, that's not correct. Beach, do you have an answer? Um, Iggy Peck Architect. That is right. You get five points for the title. All right, Beach, this is your question. In which book does the main character take care of a storm chaser's injuries after the big storm passes? Joplin Tornado 2011. And do you have an author? Tarshish. That's correct. Thank you. All right, Dodge. In what book did Trisha hope that by going to school in Michigan instead of California, she would no longer be teased? The Junkyard Wonders. That's correct. Patricia Palacio. <laughs> we'll take that. Good, good job. Okay, Beach. In which book does a policeman come up with safety tips, such as never stand on a swivel chair? Officer Buckle and Gloria. That's correct. By Rathman. Yes, thank you. All right, Dodge. In which book does Aunt Soledad refuse to enroll her children in the white school, even though they were light-skinned enough to attend? Separate is never equal. That's correct. Remember the author? No, we don't know. Okay, the author's name was Duncan Tonatua. All right, last question for Beach. Oh, wait, which question am I, am I over here? Okay. One of the main character's hobbies was collecting tiny rocks of unusual shape and color. Name the book. Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. That's correct. Steak. Yes. All right, last question, Dodge. Which book is based on a Creole folk tale uh, from the American South? I don't know. Maybe Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed? No, that's not correct. Science on the Oregon Trail? Nope. The answer was The Talking Eggs by Sansuchi. All right, very good. Well, we got through our first round. Did okay. Um, tell me some of your, let's start over here with Beach. Where do you like to read your books? When, you're, uh, when you think of a favorite place to read, where would that be? Valerie, where would you like to read? In my room. In your room, okay. Anna, do you have a favorite place? At school. 
Oh, good. All right. And Sarai? I like to read on my trampoline. Oh, how about that? Okay. And Braxton, where's your favorite place to read? In the library at school. Yay, for libraries. Yeah, we like that. Um, Dodge, where would you, where's your favorite place to read, Kinley? I don't have an opinion. It's just as long as it's peaceful there. Oh, I like peaceful places when I'm reading. Satito, where do you like to read? Uh, I like to read on my bed. Okay, I do too, yeah. Troy, do you have a favorite place? I like uh, places that are quiet, where no one is. Because you can think, can't you? you? You don't have to read the paragraph over again. How about you, Xavier? you have a favorite place? Uh, the bus. Well, how about that? I Sometimes I get a headache if I'm traveling while I'm reading, but I wish I could, because that would sure get me through a lot more books. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have our scores. The final score in this round was 105 points for Beach and 52 for Dodge. Congratulations, Beach Elementary. You will meet the winner of our next round in the final match. Let's take a look at the book talks from the teams in round two. So we're going to be talking about 11 birthdays. It's about a bunch of people celebrating birthdays. Okay. And there's only one problem that two people have one, the same birthday on one day. So they decided that um, they would celebrate the birthday on the same exact day. And these are the other people, Amanda, Leo, and Kylie, Dad, Mom, Stephanie, and that's it. So Mom decided to, um, they decided to go to a museum, a, like a pretty cool museum. But they didn't decide to have uh, any like a birthday party or anything. Meanwhile, old dad he did not want a birthday, but mom decided to buy a cake for him. Um. So. Um, Amanda didn't really do anything for like her birthday because she said she didn't want it to do anything. Same as Leo, and um. Kylie, she wanted to do, she went skating, skating it with her friends and family. And Stephanie, they decided to go, um, to go to the, to go bowling. And they decided to have cupcakes there with their family and friends. restaurant that was okay so um it was Amanda Amanda went to a restaurant with her family and her friends and that's all for uh, 11 birthdays Bye. Bye. Um. Hey, Rotary Club, we need to find out what books to or order, order the students at Irving Elementary for Rip Day. Great idea. Let's call them. Beep, boop, boop, boop. This is Mr. Maureen speaking from the Irving Library. We were wondering what kind of books the students were reading for we can order them. I have a suggestion. There's this book, Letty Out Loud, by Angela Carvante. Who are the characters? Uh, Letty, 
Brisa, Hunter, and Dr. Villalobos. What's the setting? It's uh, Letty's house and, and at school, at her school. What's the problem? The problem is that Letty is uh, from, she speaks Spanish and she doesn't know how to speak English in, in her English school. What's the solution? The solution is that Letty has her friend that speaks uh, fluent English and so she asks her for help. Uh, thank you. We will order lots of, of the books. Goodbye. Boop. The competitors in our next round are from Griffith and Irving Elementary Schools. Tell us your name and the title of your favorite book and we will start with Irving. Hi, my name is Julissa and my favorite book is The Talking Eggs. Okay. Hi, my name is Eric and my favorite book is A Wolf Called Wonder. Hi, my name is Daniel and my favorite book is Allergic. My name is Angel and my favorite book is called Diary of the Wimpy Kid. All right, and we're going to Griffith. My name is Jonathan and my favorite book is Island of the Blue Dolphins. My name is Cannon and my favorite book is The Silver Arrow. My name is Brian and my favorite book is The Golden Swift. My name is Apora and my favorite book is Dogman. All right, very good. Griffith will begin their round with seven points from their book talk and Irving will start with 10 points. The Griffin team will answer the first question. All right, are we ready? In which book do you read about a girl who wants a dog for her 10th birthday? We don't know. No guess? No. All right, five seconds for you, Irving. Allergic. That is correct. You don't need an author on a, when, when you're um, on a question like that. Okay. All right, we're going back to Irving. This is your question. In which book does an astronaut, John Glenn, make history by being the first American to orbit the Earth? Life on Mars by Jennifer Brown. No, that's not correct. Um, Griffith? No, we don't know. Okay. Either. That answer is Counting the Stars by Klein Ransom. All right, back to Griffith. In w uh, move your book down. Yeah. In which book did the main character plant orchards in the hope of supplying food for pioneer families? Um. We don't know. All right, that gives Irving a chance. Do you have an answer? Johnny and Appleseed. Can you say that title again? Johnny and Appleseed. Um, one more time. Johnny and Appleseed. Uh, judges are thinking. No, okay. Close, it's Johnny Appleseed. He's one name, so, and that's by Kellogg. All right, are we ready for Irving again? Okay. In which book do characters, Artie and Trip, imagine that a neighbor is a face-eating zombie? Life on Mars. That's correct, and the author? Jennifer Brown. Correct, very good. All right, um, this is, this is Griffith. In which book does the main character overhear her teacher calling her a show-off and a nuisance? We don't have an answer. All right, back to Irving. Five uh, seconds. Allergic? No, that's not correct. It was Ramona Quimby, age eight, by Cleary. All right, this question is for Irving. In which book is a city plagued with the odor of long buried elephant manure because it was soaked with a broken water main? Camouflage? No, that's not correct. Griffith, five seconds. Yeah. 
The answer is Smelly Kelly and His Super Senses by Anderson. All right, back to Griffith. In which book does the main character decide that calculators are a handy support when you're working through a very long and complicated problem? We don't know. No answer? Okay, Irving, can you answer in five seconds? Trash resolution? No, that's not correct. It was Solving for M by Swinder. All right, Irving, this is your question. In which book were a group of friends willing to go without milk at lunch and sell homemade t-shirt headbands to raise enough money for tickets to a Viviana Vega concert? Stepsis with the dog away. Um, you want to? Okay, nope, that's not correct. Um, Griffith, do you have an answer? No, we no. don't. Okay, Steph Soto Taco Queen by Taurus. <laughs> okay, Griffith. In which book does a mouse save a bird twice? Once when she is found nearly dead on the windowsill, and once from the family cat. Name the book. We do. We don't have an answer. Okay, Irving, five seconds. Boss versus Gloss. No, that's not correct. It's Stuart Little by White. All right. Um, Irving, this is your question. In which book do you read about Arctic terns that are small but travel through the prevailing winds from Antarctica to the Arctic and back? So it's a survival story by the others, a survival story? No, that's not correct, Griffith. Five seconds. The answer was Superlative Birds by Boyan. All right, Griffith, in which book does a team of horses go to Arlington on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour? We don't know. All right, Irving, five seconds. No answer. Okay, that was 21 Steps by Gottsfield. Okay. Irving, this question's for you. The Army General in this book created a plan that would require his soldiers to move over a dangerous river in the middle of the night to conduct a surprise attack on the British soldiers in 1776. Name the book. When Washington crossed the Delaware. Yes, do you have an author? By Jenny. By Jenny. Uh, Jenny. Say that again. Jenny. Okay, all right, we'll take that. When Washington crossed the Delaware by Cheney. All right, Griffith. In which book does a snake hide in rabbit's hole? Camouflage. No, that's not correct, Irving. Because of the rabbit? No, that's not correct either. Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears by Ardema. All right, Irving. Luke Garner leaves his family forever and becomes Lee Grant, who could do something to help third children. Name the book. Don't have an answer. Griffith? We don't have an answer. All right. The, the answer is Among the Hidden by Haddix. All right, Griffith, this is, this is your answer. It should be down at the end. 
because that was a steal. Yeah. Okay. All right. This book illustrates a special event that took place in New York City on Thanksgiving Day in 1924. Name the book. We don't have an answer. Irving? Balloon Over Broadway. Balloons Over Broadway by Sweet. Okay. All right, Irving, this is your question. In which book do you read that the harmless scarlet king snake looks similar to the venomous coral snake and can fool its predators? Who was King Tut? No, that's not correct, Griffith. Camouflage? That is correct, by Omara. All right, Griffith, this is your question. In which book did a girl watch Binky Bunnies when she was young while her dad braided her hair? Move the book back. I'll read that again. In which book did a girl watch Binky Bunnies when she was young while her dad braided her hair? Because of the rabbit? No, that's not correct. Irving, five seconds. No answer. No answer. That was Caterpillar Summer by McDunn. All right, Irving. In which book does the main character feel bad for being partly responsible for the fire that burned down his best friend's house? Wildfire. Wildfire. No, that's not correct. Griffith? No answer. Oh, Full of Beans by Home. Okay. All right, last question for Griffith. And move the book down. Yep. In which book does the main character receive his high school diploma from Minneapolis, Kansas? No answer. Okay, Irving, five seconds. No answer. Okay, that was George Washington Carver. Bye, Dunn. Yep. All right, Irving, last question. Name the book that talks about adding flavorings such as mint, chocolate chip, peach, and cherry. Ice cream, the full scoop. Yes. Kill Kibbins. Kill Kibbins. All right, thank you, that is correct. Okay, very good. So our judges are gonna tally those points up and then we'll find out um, what this final score is. I have no idea. Sitting up here, I don't even know. Let's talk about genres. Do you guys have a favorite genre? Um, Julissa, do you have a favorite genre you like to read? Do you like to read mysteries or fantasy or historical fiction? Mysteries. Do you, mysteries, you like to read those? I do too. Do you ever read the last page before you're actually done reading the book? Yeah, oh, me too. mostly. I can't help it. Okay. <laughs> Eric, what's your favorite genre? Mysteries. You like that too? Okay, are you a last page reader too? Yeah. A lot of people think that ruins the book, but I just feel like if I can't sit down and read the whole book at one setting, I deserve to know. <laughs> so, um, Daniel, what's your favorite? Graphic novels. Graphic novels are very popular among our students. They have lots of really great titles. Um, Angel, do you have a favorite genre? Uh, probably fiction. Yes, um, like realistic fiction or fantasy? Uh, probably realistic. Okay, so it could happen today. You can read about events that could happen yeah. today. Very good. Um, Jonathan, you have a favorite genre? Mystery. Okay. And Mystery. Ken, you too? Historical fiction. I love that too. I like the history part. Zipporah? Mystery. Wow, we got a lot of mystery readers up here. Okay, very good. That's a, that's a fun genre to read. Okay. All right, the score in this round was 12 for Griffith and 50 for Irving. Congratulations, Irving Elementary. You will meet the winner of the first round for the championship match. And while we change teams, let's see if you can answer some questions from last year's books.
We're ready to start our final match. The winner will be one of our champions for the 2022-2023 school year. The teams are from Beach and Irving Elementary Schools. Good luck to both teams. All right, here we go. And uh, Beach, you get the first question. In which book do you read about an instrument that at one point looked like a hunk of wood with strings on a broomstick? The electric guitar. All right, and do you have an author? By Hona. Yes, very good. All right, Irving, this is your question. Name the book that tells the story of a president and a naturalist who traveled to the woods in California. George Washington Carver. No, that's not correct. Beach, can you the answer? Camping trip that changed America. That's correct, by Rosenstock. Very good. All right, Beach, back to you. In which book do you read about a girl who realizes she loves being a big sister to her two brothers and baby sister? W ways to go love? No, that's not correct. Irving? Caterp Caterpillar Summer? No, the correct answer is Allergic by Lloyd. All right, and this question is for Irving. Tony wanted his parade creation, creations to articulate, to move, and gesture. Name the book. Over Broadway. Yes. And the author? Sweet. 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 Thank you. All right. Beach. In which book does the main character make friends with a librarian named Miss Knightley? Sideway Stories from Wayside School? No, that's not correct. Irving, do you have an answer? Midnight, midnight at the Barclay Hotel. No, the correct answer is Bernice Butman, Model Citizen by Lentz. All right, um, Irving, this question's for you. The main characters in this story discover the third secret of happiness for Merlin, which is having compassion for all living things. Name this book. Ways to Grow Love? Um, no, that's not correct. That's incorrect. Um, Beach? Dark Days in the Deep Sea? That is correct, by Osborne. All right, Beach. Okay. In which book does Father Guillaume send the mice to the <laughs> Fortensio Academy to learn more? Delphine and the Silver Needle. That's correct. And the author? Moon. Good job. I'm glad that my pronunciation didn't mess anybody up. <laughs> All right, Irving. In which book do you read about a planet being coconutted? Life on Mars. No, that's not correct. Fuzzy Apocalypse. The Fuzzy Apocalypse. Thank you. And that is by Messenger. All right, back to... Back to Beach. What book tells about a dessert that is believed to have been first made in China about 3,000 years ago by mixing snow, milk, and rice together? Ice cream, the full scoop. That's correct. By Gibbons. That's, that's right. Thank you. Okay, Irving. Kennedy and Mario decide the main character and Hunter need to add challenging words like supersonic, colossal, and rambunctious to the pet profile in the contest for Shelter Scribe. Name the book. Lady Out Loud. And the author? Um, Angela Carmarnde. Uh, close. Can you say it again? Clark. Carvante. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Angela Cervantes. Very, very close. Okay, Letty out loud. All right, moving back to Beach. In this book, you read that switches make the connection for power to travel. Name this book. Um, the Magic School Bus and the Electric Field Trip. Uh huh. By Cole. That's correct. All right, Irving. Which book does the main character discover her passion for inventing while living with her mother and brothers in New England? Marvelous Maddie. Yes. Have an author? 
We don't know the author. Okay, that author was Macaulay. All right, um, Beach. In which book do you read about a girl named Paula who helped a boy after an explosion? Rip to the, the rescue? Yes, and do you have an author? Halloween. Halloween? That's correct. All right. Irving, in which book do you read about a bugle blast starting each day? Don't know. Okay. Beach, can you answer? Life on Mars? Nope. The answer is Science on the Oregon Trail by Enns. All right. Um, okay, Beach. In which book do you read about marine mammals that have a dense, water-resistant fur coat to insulate them from the frigid waters of the Northern Pacific? Sea authors. That's correct. And do you have an author? Grog. Can you say that again? Grog. That's correct. Thank you. All right, Irving, this is your question. In what book do students get turned into apples turn mosquito bites into arithmetic problems, and count the hairs on their heads. Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Lois Sar Sarch. R. Yes, I'll take that. <laughs> Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Very good. All right, Beach. In which book do you read that in New England, 90% of greenhouse emissions are caused by sheep? Craft Revolution. That's correct. By Phoebe. Yes. Very good. All right, Irving. In which book does Ryan get upset that she cannot get more books during the trip to the library with her grandma? No answer. All right. Beach, do you have an answer? Ways to Grow Love. That's correct, by Watson. All right, Beach, this is your last question. In which book do the main characters use a self-powered emergency radio with a crank on the side to find out what is going on? The Magic School Bus and Electric Field Trip. Nope, that's not correct. Irving? Can you repeat the answer? No. We don't have an answer. Okay. Five <coughs> seconds isn't long enough for me to repeat the answer. So um, the answer is Wildfire by Philbrick. Okay. Uh, last question to Irving. In which book does a passenger of an airplane have a dog carrier without a dog? No answer. Beach? The 30,000 foot ghost. That's correct, by T Terrell. All right, very good. We are going to tally those scores up and uh, then we'll find out who one of our champions is for this year. Um, let's see. Uh, ha we've talked about favorite books. Oh, um, how did you decide, how did your team work together to figure out who was going to read which books? Did you have a certain list that you read from? Yeah, so one of us, we each read one list, and okay. then if we had time, we read some from other lists. Too. Great idea. Did any of you read from another list? Yes. You could have some time to do that? Good job. How about you guys? How did you decide who was going to read which books? Same, it was one person on each, on each team, but it, but we didn't get to read most of our books, but we read some of our books. Okay, all right. Very good. And they have lots of different genres on there. And we talked about what your favorite genres were earlier. How do you remember the details of the book? Did you take notes as you read? Did you do a graphic organizer? What did you do to remember your details? We did summaries. Okay. For so nonfiction fiction books. Okay. Very good. And how did you guys remember details for Flash your books? Cards. You what? We used flashcards. You did? Did you, um, is that how you also remembered your titles and authors? Did you do flashcards yeah. for titles and authors? Did you guys do? How do you practice titles and authors? We would just go on our list and we would, we would read them off to each other, other and oh. we would just. Try to memorize them? 
Okay. All right. We have an answer. The score for the final match today was 105 for Beach and 45 for Irving Elementary School. Our winner today is Beach Elementary. Congratulations. And we have some prizes for the winning team. So I'm just going to pass those down to you. There we go. And we also have these cool medals that you'll always be able to remember your trip to battle the books with. All right, very good. Way to go. Your dedication and teamwork throughout the year was a great accomplishment. We're proud of you and all the students who participated on the teams in our schools. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you also to the library and classroom teachers and parents for all they have contributed. Join us again Monday morning at 11 here on WPS TV Cox Cable Channel 20 or usd259.org slash WPS TV online to see another exciting Battle of the Books competition. And remember, keep reading. <laughs>